Hello Internet, so nice to see you. YouTube is full of videos that tell you that some pop or rock songs are very similar to classical music pieces. The YouTubers in question want to sell you the idea that pop songwriters or rock songwriters copy their songs from classical music. Well, I think those videos are completely off the mark and they show a lack of understanding how music theory works now and how it worked during the classical era. I'm not really faulting those YouTubers to make those videos. It seems quite natural to think that if there is a similarity, somebody copied, but this is not what happens. So let's see why some pop music sounds like classical music and also how we can use that to write new music. We all know that there are some patterns and formulas in modern music. For instance, in blues, you have the 12 bar blues chord progression. In jazz, you have progressions like the 2 5 1. It seems then reasonable to assume that classical music has some pattern too, but if we don't want to assume anything, we can just go and read some 18th century music theory books and we discover something very interesting. Music theory and music in general, music composition, was taught explicitly through patterns and music theory at the time was something quite different than what it is right now. Nobody taught music theory analysis or other stuff like that. Music theory was a tool for composers. By reading the books and the manuscripts that are left to us, and especially by looking at their exercises books, we can find that there are several patterns and we can find those patterns in the music of very famous composers. And those patterns, since they are omnipresent in all the classical music era, were played so much that they stayed in our ear. So today, when you want to write some music, you can't really ignore them. Those patterns are already in your ear, and unless you know they are there, you are going to use them. In this sense, music theory is like history. If you don't know it, you are destined to repeat it. If instead you know those patterns, then you can choose to use the pattern to write a new song, or you can choose to avoid the pattern to write something completely different, or you can even choose to modify the pattern to write something that is similar, but not the same, to what was composed before. But I promised you guys an example. So here's a pattern that originated in the 18th century. This pattern is called a Romanesca. Now, before you guys Google Romanesca, be advised that most of the online sources on it get it completely wrong. Many seem to think that the Romanesca is a chord progression, but at the beginning of the 18th century, when the Romanesca originates, we didn't invent chords yet. Nobody had even the idea or the concept of a chord. The Romanesca is in fact not a chord progression, it's more than that. It contains specific indication on how the bass line and the melody should go. Let's work in C major and let's take a descending scale from the tonic. C, B, A, G. <laughs> This descending scale potentially can be longer, it can go down to the third, so E, or it can go down for a full octave, C, down to C. But right now, we're gonna take the short version, otherwise we stay here forever. Now, let's harmonize these in thirds. So on top of this scale, made by the degrees 1, 7, 6, 5 of the scale, I'm gonna play a second line, made by the degrees 3, 2, 1, 7, so in C, E, D, C, A. If I play this line above that line, I have this sound. If instead I play this line above this other line, I have this other sound. This is the backbone of the Romanesca. To this, we can add different bass line. One very popular bass line, it's called the alternating bass, and it works this way. This alternating bass line has famously been used in the Puckle Bells canon. It's not the only possible bass line, sometimes we use a different bass line, and in fact, the most common bass line for the Romanesca is this other one. 
Now, notice that nowhere in the Romanesca is specified in what octave all those notes are. So the bass line can go down to the third or up to the third. So I can do C, B, A, down to E. Or I can do C, B, A, up to E. Now notice how so far I haven't specified the chords. Of course I can see what chords we're actually playing, but in the mind of a classical musician this is a collection of melodies that go together and your job as a composer is to elaborate those melodies. So you can change those melodies, this is just your starting point, and so the chord progression is flexible because I can change a note here and a note there and play different chords. Now comes the most important part though. There are indications on how to play the melody. Typically, the melody of a Romanesca is centered around degrees 1 and 5 of the scale. So, the C note and the G note. And in fact, typically, we play the first degrees here, the fifth degree here, and the first degree here and here. Again, this G note can be higher or lower than the C note, and we can even play, for instance, the C note in two different octaves, and we can elaborate at will. We can make a very simple melody or a very complex melody, we can play our pages, as long as those notes are featured in. This is the skeleton of a melody, if you want. Now what happens if I play just this plain melody here, no extra note? Now let me shift everything in D major, you're gonna see in a moment why, and I'm gonna play just this melody and this bass line. I'm not even gonna play the other voices that fill up the chord. So just the melody and the bass line. <laughs> I think I know this one. So you see, this song is really not copied from any specific classical music piece. It's of course similar to several classical music pieces because it's just a retelling of the same pattern. But we can go way beyond that. So let me change the melody this way. On the last stage I'm gonna play the fifth note of the key, the fifth degree, and on the first stage, I'm gonna play the first degree of the key, but in two different octaves. So I'm gonna elaborate that. I'm gonna shift everything in the key of A flat major, and you're gonna see why in a moment. So first let me play this melody just with those notes. And let's elaborate this melody a little bit more. Again, there's no reason to assume that this song has been copied from any specific piece of music. The sound of the Romanesca is in your ear, and so it's very natural as a composer to create something similar to that, even if you don't know the pattern. Of course, if you know the pattern, you have more power to elaborate all that. But let me give you a few more examples. Let's say that now I want to center my melody around the fifth note of the key, and that's pretty typically something that is done already in the Baroque era. So I'm gonna play 5, 5 and 5 here, I'm gonna play a high tonic note on this stage, and let me shift everything in the key of E flat. It's very nice, it's very baroque in sound. Now let's elaborate it a little bit. the time to listen to me whine. Again, if you know the pattern you can elaborate it. Most of those melodies are centered around the first degree of the scale or the fifth degree of the scale, but what happens if, for instance, we center our melody around the third degree of the scale, or we, at least we start from the third degree of the scale? Well, let's try a scheme like that. I'm gonna play the third degree here, the fifth degree here, the first degree, and then the third. And I'm gonna do everything in A major.
And what if I want to use the third degree of the scale even more? Well, I can use the third degree here, the fifth degree here, the third degree here, and here. I can really go on all day, and using this simple pattern, you can rewrite a lot of pop songs. It doesn't mean that those people are copying. Consciously or unconsciously, they are using the same kind of composition system that Mozart was using. Start from the pattern, elaborate the pattern, and create new music. So far I've done everything in major. What happens if I do something in minor? Well, remember that the backbone of the Romanesca is a descending line harmonizing thirds. So in minor, in this case I'm going to do it in A minor, my main descending line is A, G, F, E, and the harmonization line is C, B, A, G. But I can also use the bass line with the leap at the end, so in this case my bass line becomes A, G, F, C. It already starts to sound like a lot of songs you know, right? But let me add another typical element of the Romanesca here. On this chord progression, sometimes the fifth degree of the scale is held as a pedal note. The fifth degree here is E. So I'm just holding it all the way through this chord progression, and it sounds this way. Now if I elaborate a melody using the harmonized line and the pedal on 5, I get, for instance, this. Of course, those are just few examples among many. If you take the Romanesca pattern and elaborate it a little bit, you are going to find several hundreds more pop songs or rock songs or songs that you know that are going to sound similar to this. Again, this pattern is in your ear. You've been hearing this pattern all your life, and sometimes when you listen to a new song, you recognize the pattern so the songs sound familiar and good. To you. I don't think there's anything wrong about pattern, for the same reason that I don't think there's anything wrong with blues or jazz, for instance, even if they are made of pattern in the same way. Now, of course, you can tell me that in jazz we remix those patterns and we mix in many, many different ways. Well, we do the same here, but of course in a short YouTube video it's really hard to show more than one pattern and then how all those patterns combine. This will take a long, long time, so trust me on that. Now I know some of you will tell me, but Tommaso, videos on how pop songs use the same four chord pattern have already been made, they're nothing new. But you see, that's exactly the point. The Romanesca is not four chords. It's a pattern made of melodies that work together and made to be elaborated. It's not just four chords. Indeed, an important part of this pattern is the indication that the melody usually gravitates around the first and fifth degree of the key. If you think of the Romanesca as just four chords, you completely lose this. Now, of course, knowing just the pattern is the first step in being able to use it to write new songs. What you need to learn here is the ability of taking patterns like that, whether they're made of chords or melodies, and elaborate them to create new music. And of course, it's your music, you're the boss, you can decide to use the pattern as it is, or modify it in more or less intelligent way, or completely avoid the pattern and do something completely different. But what you need to have is the ability to elaborate those patterns, meaning creating substitutions, creating new melodic pattern, playing everything with a different voicing, adding or subtracting voices or alterations. If you want to learn how to do that on your guitar, I recommend you check out the Complete Chord Mastery Guitar course. This is not a book, it's a complete video course that will show you how to take an old chord progression and play it in new and exciting ways on your guitar. It's a course made specifically for guitar players, by guitar players, you're not going to see any piano example here, and it's a practical course. It's 
it's made also by exercises so that you get to apply everything you learn immediately on your own fretboard. You get to be functional. It's not just a theory course, it's a practical course that you can use to compose your own music. If you have a minute, click on the top right link to check out Complete Chord Mastery. If you like this video, smash on that like button, subscribe, and don't forget, after you subscribe, to click on notification, otherwise YouTube will not let you know when I put up a new video. And if you have any idea, questions, comments, write them down in the comments, I enjoy reading from you, and I make video on your suggestions. This is Tommaso Zillio of MusicTheoryForGuitar.com, and until next time, enjoy!